own lives. You get to point number four on your outline. Some application or some steps or some statements to be made about how you apply this letter written to Timothy and this instruction to him. How do we apply it to our lives? Well, first and foremost, we must fulfill. I must fulfill my duty. My duty. What is my duty? What is my calling? Some of us are gifted in certain spiritual gifts and aspects of things. And when you're gifted by something, it's something you enjoy doing. You take pleasure in it. And God gifts the followers of Christ to do that. But then there's, there's tasks and there's ministry and there's serving that needs to go on that we all just need to, to, to roll up our sleeves and get involved and do. There's, there's duty that needs to be done. And so God is challenging us to fulfill the duty that God's given to us. I know we live in a world and a society, in Christianity, where the churches try to formulate and set up their churches and their philosophies so that there's no confrontation and that you can come in and just take something and then leave. We live in a consumer society where we hunt and find the best deal on everything and we want to do the things that make us happy and, and things that we like to do and we focus on those things and then what happens is it trickles down even into our walk with Christ and we look for the church that's the most entertaining or we look for the Christianity that, 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 that appeals to us and, and it won't conflict or, or confront us about something and, and we go to that church and we like it if we can go and sit in the back and, and hear the message and then leave real quickly. You know, that's, that's the idea of Christianity that's prevalent in, in our society right now. There'll be very few sermons ever preached on duty. My duty is to serve the King and the Master. Whatever the Lord says, it means that it's going to affect my schedule. It'll affect my time. It'll affect... My money, it will affect every aspect of my life when I wrap my mind around the fact that I need to fulfill my duty to the Lord God Almighty, the one who has saved me from my sins, the one who has granted me an eternal home with Him in heaven for all eternity, the one who has forgiven me of all my sins, past, present, and future. That Master says, this is what I need you to do. So you and I have a responsibility to fulfill what it is that God's given me to do and then go beyond that. Fulfill the duty. Secondly, we've got to realize we've got to be disciplined. We've got to stop saying I can't do that and say I can do that through Christ who strengthens me. I can do it. And then lastly, we've got to be people who do the hard things. Doing the hard things sometimes is just following through with what we know we should do. It's just follow through. But I'm not talking about anything that's easy. I'm talking about the hard stuff. Forgiving people that have offended you, that hurt you. That's a hard thing. Isn't it? It's a hard thing to, to serve and do stuff that you don't feel like you, you're not quite good at or you think somebody else might do it better than you and it's it's hard we get insecure about those things it's hard to do those things it's hard to witness and share your faith with someone isn't it the devil does not want you to do that you and I are living testimonies we are evangelists and we are witnesses the church is the ministry of all believers. It's not just one person that shares the gospel. We all have that responsibility. He doesn't want us to do that. And he's made it super hard to do that. Committing to reading your Bible every day in prayer. A quiet time to God. It's a hard thing. The flesh fights against that. The devil does not want us to know more truth. To follow through with what He wants you to do. So this morning, what is He putting on your heart? What is the Holy Spirit putting in your life? Is there some responsibility or duty that you need to fulfill? Then listen to what He says to do and, and then follow through with it. If there's a discipline that you need in your life and you're, you're so tempted to say, I can't do it. 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy 1.7 he has already given you the discipline to do it. It's 
Stop saying I can't and say I can do it. Let's pray. Lord, I know that probably the hardest thing that we could ever do and the hardest thing that the devil does not want us to do is to come clean with you. To admit and confess that we are a sinner and that we can't save ourselves and that we are hopelessly lost without your grace. Lord, I pray if there's somebody here today that needs to make that initial decision to surrender their life and their all to you and trust in you alone for salvation, I pray, Lord, that you would your convicting spirit might be upon them today to make that decision, that decision that requires that we repent of our sins, that we turn from our sin and we start trusting you every day with the victory that you make available for overcoming that sin. Lord, I pray if there's those here today that need to confess your name as Lord and Savior, make a public decision by being baptized into you, making a public decision to this world about now that they are completely sold out to you. I pray, Lord, that you would put that on their heart to do even today. I pray that you would challenge all of us as followers of you to, to be committed to our duty that you've given us, to be disciplined for the task and then to just follow through with what you're commanding us right now to do. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand with me? And we're going to sing a decision song. And God puts it on your heart to make a decision. I encourage you to do that today by responding and coming forward this morning. Continue to realize that we are your church, and no matter where we go, and that people around us will see you living in us. Lord, I pray right now for our time together as we um, fellowship and enjoy uh, lunch together. I pray your blessings upon the food, Lord. I thank you for the hands that prepared it. Lord, I pray it might nourish our bodies so that we can just serve you better. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. <laughs>